he wants retribution here. If he can get a victory over Vega, then that'll do a lot to erase the memory of his first time out here where he went down to, to Ricky Vega. Well, let's see if CJ Odell can learn from his mistakes of last time. Referee, ma Vega making the referee check him here. Trying to psych out the youngster. Did you say youngster? Youngster. Oh, okay. You're the only gangsta here, Jerry. Word, Mike. Word. Vega doing a little bit of drawing with the fans who are on the side, it would appear, of CJ O'Doyle. O'Doyle's doing a good job firing up the crowd here. He's also doing a good job of uh, plugging in the promotion, wearing that free PW uh, tank top. On sale now and all on 3PW.com. 3PWrestling.com for all your 3PW merchandise needs as Vega able to take down O'Doyle in their first lock up there. Let's see if uh, he can do it a second time. Collar and elbow, nice go behind. And now CJ O'Doyle firing right back, some slaps to the head. And CJ O'Doyle says, what's up now? More convincingly than I can, apparently. Vega taking a walk. Mike, this is going to be an amazing event of action here. This is only our opening contest, but not only are we going to have a new commissioner here in 3PW later on today, but we're also going to have a brand new 3PW heavyweight champion. History guaranteed to be made here tonight. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to a loaded card here tonight. I mean, not only that, we, we have... A Xavier Homicide. I mean, that's going to be an awesome match. That's a match we've also seen in the past here at 3PW, and it, 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 it's guaranteed to deliver. What an amazing couple of athletes going at it head to head later on tonight. But right now, the fans once again getting on Ricky Vega, something fierce here at Viking Hall. Bring that on. Nice roll through by Vega. Grabs the pants there, tripping up the leg. And now O'Doyle firing right back, taking Vega down. And another standoff. These guys so evenly matched, it would seem. And you got to believe that they've been uh, studying each other's tendencies, studying tapes, and uh, doing everything they can to prepare for each other. So I, I bet they're a lot more ready for each other than the first time they met. Yeah, it, looks, it seems as if they haven't forgotten about the last match. These guys are definitely going after each other like they know each other, like, like they've wrestled 100 times before. And now both guys training hip locks and a straight up shove and a slap to the face by O'Doyle. CJ O'Doyle on the move, kick to the face. Vega's head was down too low. Again, O'Doyle, he gets caught with the big clothesline. That took him all the way down to the back. It's a monster clothesline. Vega now firmly in control. He's going to have to stay on CJ O'Doyle, just yanking him down by his uh, shrunken fro type hairstyle. Still enough hair to grab hold. Well, Vega better be careful. You see that CJ O'Doyle is trying to match fire with fire every step of the way in this match, and Vega has a lot of hair to grab onto as well. O'Doyle off the ropes now. Look at this out of nowhere. Fujiwara arm bar. And Vega needs to reach for the ropes. He's got it. That's going to force the break. So you can see now, uh, O'Doyle's arsenal seems to be aimed at the arm here. Maybe he's looking to finish him off that Fujiwara arm bar at some point in time. An aspect of O'Doyle's uh, offense that we hadn't seen in his earlier encounter here in 3PW. And that's coming in the hard way for Ricky Vega, who is in some big time trouble now. Hard knife edge. And CJ O'Doyle is looking for the proverbial 10 punches of fun. Only gets seven, and Vega shoves him right down. Meets him with a boot to the face. That's two. And O'Doyle better come up with a plan B, but instead he gets nailed with that spinning heel kick. Beautiful series of moves by Vega, who was in control that whole last few maneuvers. O'Doyle goes up. Look at the power here, six. 
Seven, eight, nine, ten seconds. Stalling suplex for Ricky Vega. Ricky Vega going to going to the top. This is this is not you you know something he's known for. Another side of his game. Will it be successful for Ricky Vega? He's at the end of the high dive. He's off. And no water in that pool. C.J. Doyle finds an opportunity to roll out of the way. Looks like a pretty even playing field right now, Mike. Yeah, definitely. When, once, once Vega goes off his game like that and goes to the top, you know, that leaves him open to stuff. The things like, you know, Doyle just did. I mean, he's not used to this. Which one of these youngsters is going to pick up the victory here and make a claim for getting it off of the opening card here in 3PW? You can argue a case that both are deserving, but only one will win. Reverse DDT out of nowhere. Beautiful series of maneuvers by C.J. O'Doyle. Instead of going for the pin, what, what is he doing? What, what's he doing? O'Doyle to the top. It's do or die here. He hits the big leg drop. That should be all. That's a two. Oh, Vega finding a way to kick out. He had him. He could have had him with that. O'Doyle can't believe it. He thought that he was going to fi finish him off with that uh, leg drop. And he, he's looking for some sort of forearm. Vega out of the way. O'Doyle off the ropes. Flown over by CJ O'Doyle. Oh. business especially here in 3pw these guys look at him as an absolute icon definitely an absolute icon extreme icon i mean this man is known to fly you know what? i'm gonna go out of here and say this is i'm gonna guarantee this is gonna be a hard-hitting match between these two and we have a shoving match between roadkill and monster mac and monster mac is surely not used to being outsized but he is in this case. Big right hand by Monster Mac, and these guys going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Tit for tat, trying to match up in the brawling department. Looks like they match up pretty well, but here comes Roadkill. And Irik put an end to that situation. Monster Mac apparently having no desire to earn the, the respect or the admiration of this crowd. He just wants a victory. Oh, wow. No, no movement on either of them there. Pardon the pun, but Roadkill is pretty much enduring the equivalent of getting hit by a Mack truck, and he's not moving. And now Roadkill, unable to do much to Monster Mac. He did move a little bit, though. Would, would that be a Monster Mac truck? Yes. Yes, it would. Power slam out of nowhere from Monster Mac, the first big offensive move. And with the power these guys have, I'm not so sure that it's going to take too many to put the other down. Roadkill looks to be okay. He's back on his feet and he's leading a chant against Monster Mac. He knows he's got this crowd in the palm of his hand. And he's trying to use it to build some sort of momentum, but Monster Mac just basically doesn't give a crap. And a monster clothesline did nothing. Have you ever seen that? This is definitely a match of first here. Wow. Roadkill just immovable. Again, Monster Mac on the move. Out of nowhere, the Scrap Buster Slam from the angry Amish Road Kill. Monster Mac taking a breather here now. I mean, any anybody, any other man would be a knocked out cold. Oh! And Road Kill running through Monster Mac, putting him right through the steel guardrail. 
Looks like the big man's gonna fly. He's up on the apron. Wow. What a collision there. Monster Matt getting out of the way. Roadkill finding nothing but steel. And Monster Mac now trying to get a, a round of applause for himself. I, I don't think it's gonna work here, buddy. Monster Mac. Oh. Monster Mac teasing a, a take it to the air, but he does leap off the apron with a double axe handle. That's damaging enough. And now Roadkill being sent back into the ring. What a feather in the cap of Monster Mac if he can kick off his singles career here in Propane Pro with a win over a Philadelphia icon like Roadkill. Yeah, definitely looking, looking for a win here on, uh, on Roadkill's home playing field, as it were. And here we go, Monster Mac with the one-man cannonball just hurling himself back first into the prone body of Roadkill. I mean, Monster Max known as a tag team specialist, but you know, he's really impressing me here. Like, like, ever since he left the hit squad, this man has definitely gone on to some better, bigger and better things. Absolutely. And uh, Roadkill is uh, certainly bigger. And if he can run over this bigger and better thing that is the Amish Angry Warrior, then uh, he's definitely going to be on the right track here in Pro Pan Pro. And you see Monster Mac keeping the offense very nice and simple. Looks just like, raking the face. Looks like he was trying to rip his beard off. I don't think Roadkill would have taken too kindly to that, personally. Roadkill fighting his way out of that predicament. Gets met with a boot to the midsection. And what would you call that? It was like a jawbreaker, but instead it was to the back of the head. Innovative offense from Monster Mac. From Bedstuy, do or die, Brooklyn. Monster Mac to the top. Talking about big men flying around the ring. And this is certainly do or die. If he hits this, you gotta believe it's over, and you gotta believe the ring might break. The big man is up. And nobody home. Roadkill managing to get out of the way. A bullfrog splash. <laughs> Big old bullfrog. Springboard! Backward splash off the second rope from Roadkill. But he is in no condition to make the cover, unfortunately, for him. And these great 3PW fans once again coming alive. Right hand blocked by Roadkill, and he's got a series of right hands of his own. Looking for a suplex. Can he get Monster Mac up? He did it now! Wow! You can feel the vibrations of that all the way through the building up here on the broadcast position. No road kill up to the top. Once again, looking for the high risk. And he gets the clothesline. Nicely done. He's got a two and a half count. These super heavyweights are really impressive. I mean, where else do we see 300 pound men moving around like cruiserweights? Not since that movie, The Disorderlies, in the 80s have I seen anything like this. Come on, Jerry, give us a human beatbox. Roadkill! He's looking for the full-on charge, and poor Jim Molino. He is out cold. Oh, my God. One of, you know, Jim Molino is a very tough referee, but... Nobody. Monster Mac had something from his tights chain. Roadkill out of the way. Taking care of business is Roadkill. Looks it. Fireman's carry. TKO. That's the barn burner. He may have him pinned right here. One, two, three. But there's no ref. Monster Mac is absolutely out of it right now. Jim Molino is also absolutely out of it right now. And Roadkill trying to kill him with kindness, I guess. 
Lassimac going back to his tights. I think, I think he has another chain here. Road kills, got Monsta back up, but he, 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 I think he nailed him with that loaded fist. Unbelievable, Monsta Mac gets the win. Monsta Mac stole a victory. to both of us that Roadkill had that match won with the barn burner. The referee was out. Monster Mac going not once, but twice to the what appears to be a steel chain. Something. Is he trying to be cool? Stryker's, Stryker's wants to be down. Stryker is maybe the only guy in this building who's whiter than, than we are, Mike. I don't think he's, he's definitely whack. <laughs> he is. <laughs> we got a uh, Greco Roman knuckle lock here to start things off, test of strength. Look at the quick movement of Ruckus taking Stryker down in the blink of an eye. And I don't think Ruckus is here to play games. I don't think he's here to have fun and, and clap and all that. He's here to make an impact here in Propane Pro. Hey, I just, I just had an idea. What if, what if the new commissioner's Frank Talent? I mean, it would make sense. He's, he, you know, commissioner. Uh, we have a Cobra clutch of sorts applied by Stryker. And uh, apparently he needs some more practice on that move because Ruckus appeared to be feeling absolutely no effect. He needs to go back to boot camp for that move. Leapfrog by Stryker. A double leapfrog, and there's that chop out of nowhere. No effect on Ruckus. No, he, he's still whack. He's absolutely not super fly, but he thinks he is. Duck under by Stryker now. Ruck is able to meet him every step of the way. Kick to the side of the head. Duck under by Stryker. And look at that flick through and coming back with a floating kick. And this kid Ruck is defies gravity. Or so it would seem. Now Stryker with a simple eye poke or in some part of the face. All the flips in the world can't beat that. That eye rude awakening. If anybody needs a rude awakening, and I'm not just talking about the move. Did he say Repo Man? I, I think he did. What, what the? He, he, he's got the, the bell. And he, he rung the bell on the, the midsection of, of Ruckus. What? That doesn't even warrant a disqualification. That was just ridiculous, not malicious. Maybe it, it should actually warrant an institutionalization. This guy really What's needs some help. Walking the second rope, nobody home. Ruck is getting out of the way. And, I mean, he had 10 minutes to recover. Look at this flat line right out of nowhere from Ruckus. Ruckus setting him up. Ruckus up to the top, looking for the moonsault. Wow! Moonsault, leg drop. Striker kicking out, but unbelievable. If you're watching on Smart Mark video, you're going to want to go back, rewind, and watch that again because 
That's the only way you're gonna believe it actually happened. Don't, don't say that, Jerry. They're gonna keep rewinding. They're never gonna get through the tape. Nobody home. That triple backflip, power drive elbow. One for the fan. And the, the super kick from Stryker. I wish he would at least decide who he wants to imitate as he hits that uh, elbow from the second rope. Bret Hart elbow. Well, he's been called stuff that rhymes with hit. And there's a reverse neckbreaker dropping down to his knees and dropping out of nowhere. That was never done in the 80s or 70s. Oh, some new school uh, offense mixed in by Stryker. Wasted some time on the top, though. Superfly leap. He gets it. And Stryker gets the win. Held the tights. This new commissioner has to do something about this. People are just going nuts here at the PW.
new commish has something to say. I think it's time for the inaugural address. They've met. says because I don't want to have to end up in there with Low Key. And you don't want to mess with his new bodyguard, Jack Victor. <laughs> oh. 
Low Key hasn't been in 3PW since our first anniversary show, which you can find highlights of on 3PW's uh, DVD, our second DVD. You can find that at Suncoast, Musicland, any DVD retailer, basically. Or you can get the tape from smartmarkvideo.com. That is true, the complete unedited version of the of the event. Get them both. Well, with all your swearing, Jerry. We got an intense color nobo going on right now. When you talk about intense, you have to talk about low key. He's probably the most intense guy in this in this sport that I can even imagine. Now this this man, you know, man of few words, but you know, oh. Hard kick to the shin, and it, you know that's just not Joey Matthews' style. You know he's not a martial arts kind of guy. There's no way he can match that sort of offense from Loki. He's going to have to come up with something, and he's going to have to come up with it fast because he's only known about this match for three minutes. I mean, I mean, how can you, how can you, you know, prepare for Loki? I mean, all you can do is pad your, pad your tights a little more. Well, I've heard Joey Matthews pads his tights regularly, but that's for a totally different reason. We'll just have to ask Alexis. Another intense color noble. Neither man wanting to give an inch. And down on the mat. They're not letting go. Low key rolling over on top. Now Matthews on top. They just won't let go. Matthews is in the ropes. Refer referee with a judgment call not to force the break. There is no correct strategy for Loki because he's dangerous, you know, on the mat and standing up. If he's not going to kick you, he's going to choke you out. And look at the intensity here. Neither man giving an inch all the way to the outside. Finally, the referee says enough is enough. Let's get back in the ring and start things up again. Loki came into 3PW, a house of fire, with a big win over his very own mentor in the notorious 187 homicide and we haven't seen him since but finally he is back and he is ready to he was ready to take on anybody apparently i don't think he cares whether it's joey matthews or anybody else he just wants to beat somebody up and get another big victory they're all just pieces of meat to low key just just big punching and kicking bags just flesh waiting to be bruised and Matthews covering up. Instead, Loki holds on to the uh, body scissors. Keeping him down on the mat. And here's Matthews grabbing hold of the arm and managing to wrench himself free. Hammerlock of sorts on that left arm of Loki. Into a pinning predicament. Only a one and a half. And these fans not at all very happy with the low risk wrestling style of Joey Matthews. I don't think they'll be happy unless they see him getting kicked in the face. Hey, I won't be happy until I see him kicked in the face. And again, Joey Matthews out here, no minions, no Rob Echoes, no striker who just came off of a victory just moments ago. And Matthews had no time, he had no opportunity to get his troops in order even if he wanted to. Could, could this be a signal of problems in Minionville? I have no idea. And look at this now, head to head, literally. Knuckle lock, test of strength, looks to be uh, won by Loki, who has Matthews down on his knees, now just bridging him back, bending his entire body. Matthews with a nice bridge, staying up off of his shoulders, and even with the weight of Loki, oh! wow. Let's hope he had the padding that time. Oh. And Joey Matthews knocked down, for lack of a better term. And again, Matthews sliding ahead to the outside. Loki is in firm control thus far. Until Joey will be firm for a while. Here we go again. Another lockup and a nice takedown by Matthews. 
grabbing onto that leg. And uh, now Loki is covering up. That's somewhat unlike Loki. Matthews going for a waist lock, and now Loki back on top. Such tremendous body control by Loki. Open hand strikes. He's just trying to break through the barricade that is Matthews holding onto his head for dear life, trying to shield himself as much as possible. And now Loki forced to resort to a submission hold. Top wrist lock. Matthews rolling through. Matthews no slouch in the mat techniques. And now back on top is Joey Matthews. Nice stroll cradle. Gets a two count. Low key. Hanging on. Yeah. Side headlock. These guys just going back and forth, back and forth. And we're seeing more out of Joey Matthews as far as pure mat technique and skill than I think we've ever seen. Low key is bringing out the best in him. Low key wrenching on that headlock and knowing the type of athlete that low key is, every simple move, even something as basic as a headlock is, is applied with ferociousness and intensity. But still, Matthews finding a way out, back to that top wrist lock now and using his leg as a pivot point, putting Loki back down. Now he's in that bridge position. Great neck strength by Loki, as we saw earlier from Matthews. Matthews feeling out, trying to get a pin here. Loki rolling out of that one, back on his feet. And now a side headlock from Joey Matthews. He's sent off the ropes, holds on to the top. Joey Matthews not ready to pick up the pace just yet. He just stopped the whole pace. And there we go again, though. Loki moving in with another side headlock. What will Matthews do here? So far, they've been going counter for counter. Matthews stopping on the foot, getting a headlock of his own. Innovative, but hey, it worked. Yeah, just thinking, just that, not even technical. He just has to think on his, you know, back to his brawling tactics. Brawling rule breaking. That's, that's what Joey Matthews is going to have to do here against Loki. And a hard shoulder tackle by Matthews. Oh. And Loki out of nowhere, grabbing onto that leg. Matthews again in desperation, in a panic mode, if you will, reaching for that bottom rope to force the break. Just when he thought that he had things in hand, Loki comes at you from the ground up. Told you, dangerous from anywhere, Loki. Out of nowhere, double Mongolian style chop overhead. And a hard knife edge. And Matthews firing back. And again, these guys train in chops like there's no tomorrow. And finally, Matthews hits the mat and again rolling to the outside. Matthews wants none of that. Well, I think Matthews has to realize that there's certain areas of offense that he just can't match Loki in. He has to play to his own strengths and not try to, to get locked in this habit of, of matching Loki move for move. Side headlock by Joey Matthews once again. Loki shoving him off, looking for the hip toss. Reversal by Joey Matthews. Nice arm drag. And another, and now Loki is reeling. Matthews very happy with himself, but I don't think he's too happy with that. Threw it to the face. Joey Matthews catching Loki coming in. And just when you think low key is down and out, he catches himself between the top and middle rope, comes back through with that kick. Matthews was not prepared at all, Mike. It just seems that all of, all of Matthews' offense is just starting to, to piss off low key. Power drive elbow by low key. Shades of his hero, the great Muda. One of his biggest influences in the business, reverse knife edge. And now Matthews firing back, low-key firing back again. And you can see the effects of those chops on Matthews. Low-key, by the way, showing no ill effects. Well, Loki, Loki looks like 
I'm like he's fresh as a daisy here. I never thought it's the first time anybody's ever used daisy as a reference to low key. <laughs> I was just I watch my words. <laughs> Hopefully for you, he won't watch that tape, that part of the tape. And low key just taking Matthews pretty much from pillar to post here. It's the rip through Joey Matthews' flesh world tour. And here we go, he's looking for that car real kick. The title crush. Great maneuvering by Matthews, using the referee to his advantage and catches, catches a Russian low key with that reverse neck breaker. And whether you like it or not, this is the Joey Matthews game plan. This is his style. He has to use his brain, he has to use his intelligence, and maybe he has to bend the rules in order to get an advantage, but this is definitely his game, and when he's on it, Loki may find himself in some big time trouble. Matthews to the outside here. European style forearm. Matthews taking low key toward the guardrail. Now just ramming him into that apron. Vertical press no good, only a two count for Joey Matthews. And this is what Joey Matthews has to do. He has to keep low key down where he can be in control as much as possible. Loki fighting his way back to his feet. And Matthews just cuts him off. Unprotected elbow. And another two count for Joey Matthews. Nice chin lock applied. Very basic again. And you can see him maneuvering away from the referee, and you have to believe he's looking for, for a choke holder. Something that he wants to sneak in there. He has to watch those hands. Low-key being kept on the mat for now. He seems to have no escape for this, or he's just in too much pain to find a way to counter it, but, well, that'll do it. Straight up kick out of nowhere. His feet just come, just come from all directions. It's like they're intelligent or something. They've got minds of their own. Matthew's fighting it. Loki looking for a German suplex. And Loki explodes with a low drop. He has him where he wants him. Springboard. And he gets caught with the reverse atomic drop from Joey Matthews. Tremendous heads up from the new school, Joey Matthews. And I, I, I gotta tell you, Mike, for the first time ever in 3PW that I can recall, there's actually somewhat of a mixed reaction for Matthews. I think part of this crowd is actually showing him a little bit of respect for how well he's holding his own here. And what a knee drop. Hey, even though he was forced against his will, anytime you step in with Loki, you automatically earn respect. Well, he's certainly earning Loki's respect and obviously vice versa. Joey Matthews out here to accept what he thought was his new position as commissioner here in 3PW. I don't know who was playing a rib on him about that one, but uh, you know, he came out here and he said the only guy he didn't want to face was Raven, but I don't think he had any idea Ooh. that Raven had low key in store. Hard, hard close, short clothesline by Matthews. And Matthews, uh, very, very proud of himself, doing a lot of jaw jacking. And now Loki, out of nowhere, rolling through with that kick. And look at Joey Matthews, he, he may have been taken out with that single kick out of absolutely nowhere. Oh, back to those chops. 
Oh my god. Wow. Reversal of whip by Matthews and a big clothesline. Loki floated all the way across the ring, springboard into the savant kick. Loki winding up. Oh, uh, we've seen this before from Loki. Oh man. And, and Matthews. He rolls out of the way. Smart move. Loki was going for that big final kick to the head that he likes to end that series of kicks with, but Matthews thinking better of it. He's being brought into the ring, and he just drops Loki's neck over the top. This could be Joey Matthews' big chance. Matthews looking for his clothesline. Hard clothesline gets it. Two and nine tenths. Almost had that. What a back and forth match we're seeing here. Using his knees from an upside down position, and he's got him in that dragon clutch draped over the top rope. Referee forcing the break. You only have a five count for a submission in the ropes, but low key yanked on that head with all of his might. And I think they're right, he, he was tapping while he was on the ropes. Matthews may have been tapping out, but it's not legal. You can't finish a match with a submission while on the ropes. Matthews on the second rope. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, big power bomb. Loki rolling through, gets the two count. Again, Matthews' ego getting the better of him there as he took just a split second too long on that second rope. He could have had a big offensive move, but instead he's in severe trouble. Loki setting up again. I think he's signaling oh. for the key crusher. He was. Yeah, he's looking for it. He, if he gets him no. up, it, no. Matthews counters, able to shift his weight. And Loki has to drop him backwards. Kick to the sternum area. This is a match that Joey Matthews is going to remember for the rest of his career. Matthews shoving Loki into the corner. Now Matthews setting him up for something. Setting him up for that neck breaker. He's looking for that Virginia necktie. And Loki oh. dropping down and in midair, a pinpoint kick right to the forehead of Joey Matthews. Only low key, Mike. Only low key could pull something off like that. He's flipping. He's got the title crush. He hit him, and that's usually the beginning to the end. Low key looks to be on his way to there victory. It is. The dragon clutch. He's wrenching back, and Matthews is. He's tapping, but he raked the eyes of the official. Now he's tapping. John Finnegan can't see it. He's blinded. Matthews getting in that eye rake. The referee not calling for the disqualification. And apparently, Matthews able to pass it off as incidental contact, but our referee is blinded. He can't see a damn thing. Loki has to watch out. Matthews getting up. Loki can't believe that he didn't just win the match. Low blow from Joey Matthews. And the Virginia neck. That's the necktie. He lays him out. Loki. Should be done for if Matthews can get the victory and if the referee can, can recover. The referee's making the count and low key. Foot on the ropes. Low key in desperation, somehow able to get that foot over that bottom rope and the match once again will continue. Matthews again going for the pin by dragging him away from the ropes, but this time Loki able to recover enough to kick out on his own. Matthews has hit Loki with his hardest shot. He's had no game plan going into this match. He had no notice going into this match. What is he thinking? Well, Joey Matthews obviously one of the most intelligent guys one of the most intelligent in-ring competitors here in 3PW. We've seen that by his performance here. But what is he 
able to come up with now? What could he be possibly planning? Looks like he's going for the dragon clutch, but he can't lift him. Low-key dead weight. He's maybe maybe he's knocked out here. Whoa! Counters into the into the dragon. That's the dragon clutch again in center ring. And that's it. Joey Matthews taps. Joey Matthews taps. Ladies and gentlemen, in 21 minutes. Just an amazing match. Your winner by submission. And you can hear the low key chants loud. You can hear them strong throughout Viking Hall. Joey Matthews, what a performance by him as well. He he showed some guts and quite frankly some ability that we've never seen from him before here in, in 3PW. No, no, definitely a lot, a lot of guts, but you know, that also took away from his brain. He was able to fall for Loki's ruse at the end. Loki. Loki, a man of honor in this business, and he, a man of sportsmanship, and he'd like to see this thing ended on a handshake, apparently. He certainly earned the respect of Joey Matthews. Joey Matthews has certainly earned the respect of Loki. But will Matthews allow himself to actually show an indication of sportsmanship? This isn't a Joey Matthews character. No. That's the Joey Matthews we know. The more things change, the more they stay the same. But nonetheless, Loki is back in Pro Pain Pro. And Loki has gotten himself a big, big victory. And let's not forget about our new commissioner. Wait, wait. Looks like Matthews is heading back towards. No, the ref keeping him back. What an unpredictable night here at Viking Hall. What's going to happen next? Disrespectful, like. Did somebody hit him with a coconut? Striker again making a mockery out of wrestling's legendary past, this time focusing on the superfly Jimmy Snuka. Rob Echo set for one-on-one -on -one competition, but he didn't come out here alone. He's got his Matthews minion partner with him. And Stryker, Joey Matthews not out here on this occasion as he's apparently, you know, obviously his back still licking his wounds from that match with the low kick. Probably, probably getting some tourniquets tied on him. Take him out on the stretcher. And here we go, one-on-one -on -one action. Go behind by Echoes, who is severely, severely outsized. He's got to be outweighed by about 100 pounds in this one. But never, nevertheless, he manages to black, back Nini into the corner, set for the ride, Nini with a reversal and a backsplash into the corner. 
Nice snap mare by the meanie. And a wacky elbow. The only way to describe that one gets a two count for the blue one. Looked like he was going to follow it up with a big elbow smash for the head. Echo's taking a powder. And I don't know if it's better for him in the ring, getting beaten up by the mini or being outside, having to deal with that wacko striker. That's definitely a disadvantage having to take, take, take some advice from that striker. Echoes didn't even look happy at all to have Stryker come out to the ring with him. I'm not sure that that was voluntary on his part. Echoes with the strong headlock there. Echoes is going to have to use his speed. Up and over here, Stryker from behind holding on to Echoes. I'm not sure if Echoes... Echoes is confused. I don't think he, he wants Stryker to interfere at all at this point. What, what is he doing? He's offering him... He said killer bees? Oh, he wants to put a mask on him. Oh, he wants to do the old uh, switcheroo. Oh, they look a lot better this way. Yeah, at least we don't have to look at Rob Echoes anymore. Who carries two masks in their tights? In their underwear. Who dresses up as Jimmy Snuka besides Jimmy Snuka? Good point. Meany in firm control of the now masked Rob Echoes. Are you sure that's Echoes there? Well, it says Echoes on his tights. Pretty big, bold lettering. Not much mystery here. Echoes is just getting kicked straight to hell. And now Stryker looking for the switch. Uh, uh, somehow I have a feeling that with our crack officiating team, he's just not fooling anybody, despite the clever ruse. Clever. And Echoes from behind with all that chicanery going on with a reverse neck breaker getting a two and a half count. Believe it or not, that wacky idea from Stryker actually worked. Why don't we just start calling them the executioners? How about the machines? How about the dumbasses? The gay lords. <laughs> Straight up choke from Rob Echoes. Mini off the ropes. And he catches Echoes with his head down too early. Backslide attempt. Only a two. And Echoes right back on the prone blue mini. It looks like, looks like Meanie's underestimated Rob Echoes here tonight. Again, Meanie firing back. What's, what's Stryker? Stryker's, well, Meanie's beating on Echoes on the... You know, you would think if Stryker had any purpose out there, he'd be trying to stop Echoes from being beaten. He didn't block Echoes from hitting the corner. I don't think he meant to. Oh! And Meany taking a punt, giving a punt to Stryker now. And, wow. That's togetherness, people. I guess that's why they work so well as a team. From behind, almost getting the pin is Meany. And here's Echoes. Alpine line. That's no. Meany gets out of it. That goes to the top here. Well, I guess he's going to fly like a butterfly and try and look like a killer bee. Cross body, Meany just catches a front slam. Uh-oh, could this be the Meany salt? And what's what is Stryker doing from behind? He's on the attack. The referee's back is turned. Mini wants to unmask this guy. No, he turned the mask around. Uh-oh. No, 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 no. No. Oh. Stryker stunner on his own partner. Can this guy get any dumber? DDT on Echoes. Mini with 
the pin. Five minutes and 40 seconds. Your winner, the Blue Mini. The Blue Mini pile out. And here's Stryker on the attack now. The match is over. Stryker may have loaded up that match. You know, I wouldn't put it past them. I wouldn't put it past the minions. And you're, there's no telling what Stryker's capable of. This guy's absolutely insane. He's got him up. And Echoes. Echoes and Stryker working as a cohesive unit for once. Another superfly leap. Echo says, I don't think he wants him to do it. Stryker doesn't really care. I think that's what you guys are out of here. Tell us how you really feel, Kanish. Don't hold back. The law and order of pro wrestling, Raven. Typical campaign speech. performing on call, trying to kiss up to the new commish. Put your wrist on. No, I thought that's what you were doing. No, no. Who, who, who was he doing? Uh, so. Yeah. Who? Jimmy Superfly So. So do you think it would be interesting that next week we have a fight say Jimmy Superfly So? Wait a second, <laughs> Superfly? Jimmy. Oh, yeah, the gimmick. The real? Anyway. At least not tonight, but next month will be here, and then you can fight the next month. Whoa! The real Superfly Jimmy Snuka, the legendary Superfly Jimmy Snuka. Sentiments exactly. Oh, oh no. come on! Oh. I think about 500 things in this uh, arena just went limp. Baby, baby. You know what? I want to do body and presence. I body and presence. Sabu in that main event tonight for that vacant championship. Jasmine got the sugar daddy something? That's not how it's supposed to work. You, no, she's just leaving the ring to come up here. She's just leaving him on her own. Come on. Yeah. That'll happen. Apparently, Jasmine is hot and generous. How did Todd Gordon get so freaking lucky? Money. Plain and simple. Sugar debt. Oh, wait a second. I think Jasmine... 
Basement just multiplied. Will that happen every time she walks through that curtain? For me. And look, she can't get away. It's always nice to have a pet. Think she's housebroken?
and trying to stir up some controversy here. This is not backing down and Wolf goes right to work. We have ourselves a match. The Pitbull going to work on the Debonair one. Damian Adams, one of the more impressive guys who's coming to 3PW in quite a while, but he's taking on an extremely, extremely pissed former 3PW heavyweight champion. Dropkick by Damian Adams here. Holding his own and Wolf rolling out to ringside. But Damian Adams coming out on fire here. Adams watch on out. the move, baseball slide, Wolf hits the steal. And Adams better watch out for Vixen, it sounds like she is extremely dangerous. Vixen standing what looks to be about 6'1", 6'2", 6'3". Oh. Nothing's affecting the pit bull here. Now Wolf just shaking it off. And this is not where Adams wants to be when you're taking on a, an animal like the pit bull. This guy, I mean, he was always tremendously ferocious, but now with this new attitude, this bitterness, this hatred, and Vixen holding down the top rope, Adams all the way to the floor. To the hard concrete, did you hear him? He just splat. That's gotta be it, Damian Adams has to give it up right now. He's only gonna get more and more pain for this. And now Wolf already picking up a chair. Oh, throwing it right into the head of Adams. Gary Wolf is a two-time 3PW heavyweight champion. He has held that title for the longest period of time out of all the champions, former. And uh, certainly, at this point, he'd go down as the most dominant 3PW champ ever. However, at this point, he's on the outside looking in. He wants to get back in the title hunt. He wants that championship back. And I have a feeling that his path of destruction is going to continue here in Propane Pro until that happens. Look at Adams, just, just totally decimated by those chair throws. Stalling suplex. Gary Wolf with a decided power and size advantage. He's got an experience advantage. And of course, he's got Vixen at ringside. She's already Vixen. shown her. Adams is bleeding. He's bleeding a gusher there. I think you're right. He's busted, busted. open. Wearing the crimson mask. Damian Adams fighting back. Adams has been in some tremendous battles here in 3PW. Off the ropes, cross body. Gets a quick two count. The pit bull just shrugs him off and puts him back down with a clothesline. Look at the blood just dripping down. Adam, this, this, is, a, this is a massacre. Gary Wolf, if he has any compassion with him anymore, he has to let this end. Well, that's the thing, Mike. I, I, I don't think he does. Right hands by Adams. He's still got some fight left in him. Oh, no! Power bomb. Adams going for the Huracan Rana. And Pitbull just takes him down full force. Picks that. him right back up. This, he's saying this isn't over. There's only one way out, he says. He'll pin him when he wants him. And that's going to do it. Make the three count. Adams out of nowhere. Wow. What? Damian Adams upset. But has he truly won here tonight? You gotta be kidding me. No, he has. Damian. It doesn't look like a winner here tonight. The pit bull going for that steel chain. He's got it around the neck. Somebody's got to get out here. We got to see what's to happen. Damien! He's hanging him. He's hanging him. Down the... Someone's got to do something. Where's Raven? Where's the commissioner? 
more so people than that. anyone. Back, Jim Molino, the referee is trying to get the pit bull off. The pit bull has just totally lost it. He's lost yet again. Damian Adams sneaking out a three count out of nowhere. You gotta believe that, that Wolf realizes that that did not help his chances for getting another title shot. We have to worry about the, the condition of Damian Adams here. Damian Adams is out on the floor. Gary Wolf. I mean, if anything, you just gotta watch out for this man. This man is dangerous, especially with Vixen here. She has made him even more sadistic than he was. Oh no, he's going back after Adams. He's not done. Gary Wolf, the pit bull, leaving with Vixen, losing effort, but... Uh, what a victory for Damian Adams on the flip side, but, but I mean, let's focus on the important stuff here. Damian Adams is in serious, serious trouble, medically speaking. Hopefully they've already put out a call to an ambulance. Another guy we've seen many times here in Pro Pan Pro, and he has made such a name for himself here, holding his own with some of the best in the business, including the all around best Xavier, as well as guys like the aforementioned Low Key and Kid Cash. He's been out here making a name for himself, and this could be a big, big victory for him if he can put down Xavier for a second time. see Slater chance loud and strong these fans love to get on the case of Xavier sent to the opposite corner big back body drop early on from homicide H homicide just stalking his victim here two of the most technically sound competitors in this sport both from the New York area hard shoulder block by homicide who's on the move and eats a foot of Xavier Great elevation with that pinpoint drop yeah, kick. Picture perfect drop kick. And over the top of the plancha, Xavier is just non-stop motion so far. They're certainly not starting off slow. Oh, hard chop to the back. To the rail. Now Xavier exerting some offense. Xavier sent back into the into the ring. And some right hands by the all-around best as he was able to recover first upon re-entering the ring. Oh. Did you see him throw that slap in? Homicide firing back. Oh. That's all about pride. That's all about intimidation. These guys trying to get inside each other's heads. Oh. Talking about getting in someone's head. Oh, well, that's getting someone's head into the turnbuckle. Xavier ducking under clothesline, looking for the overhead suplex. Homicide landing on his feet and a drop kick of his own. These guys know each other so well. I mean, since the last time they've met, you gotta believe Whoa. that they've been studying up and getting ready Headbutt. for this inevitable rematch. Snapmare by oh. Nothing, nothing, nothing fancy about that. Just a kick to the spine. This this man, Homicide, he epitomizes strong style. He is what they talk about when you say submission, hard-hitting offense. This man is strong style. Heavy Japanese influence from Homicide, who's competed overseas on many an occasion, and now just cutting off Xavier by poking the eyes and just continuing the assault. Xavier is just being 
beaten here. Whoa! These fans coming alive as Homicide with a full tilt running big boot, Yakuza style kick for the face of Xavier. And you see the results right now with Xavier back down on the mat. Now, Mike, if you're Xavier, what do you have to do at this point? You're beaten down. You're being totally dominated. How can you even hope to come back? I would um, stay down. If you were Xavier, I know what you would do. You wouldn't be there in the first place. I would have stayed home. You would have called in sick. Power slam out of nowhere. I guess that's a good start. You see how deeply Xavier was hooking that leg. He wanted to surprise Homicide with the one, two, three right there. He wanted this sucker over. And that's a drop kick, full tilt to the face of Homicide. And now it's Xavier's turn. I think he wants to beat up Homicide a little bit. He's doing just that, the chops, the forearms. Homicide unable to fight back. Knees to the foot, to the face and the forehead. Wow. Xavier, a tremendously underrated striker. And he was looking for the springboard. Here he it. dropped. Oh! Wow. Took his head off. <laughs> Xavier is almost laid out on the ring announce table. Looking about as dead as any turkey that I've seen on a Thanksgiving table. Homicide bringing him back to his feet, and now it looks like Hom uh, Xavier is going to try and chop Homicide off the apron. They're trading blows. Uh oh! Oh! Homicide catapulted Xavier up, and I think he may have hit that steel post. Amazingly, Xavier is back to his feet. That could have been a match ender. Oh! Top leg on Hilo from Homicide. Through the ropes to the outside. I think they may have taken out some of that guardrail. They definitely rammed into it. fans appreciative of the hard-hitting offense and the high-risk offense of Homicide. You know, I like these fans. They do my job for me. They call it like they see it. Xavier recovering off the top rope with the big clothesline. Only a two. And now Xavier in control, looking for a pump handle position. He's got that arm grapevine through the legs of Homicide. I, I think he may have been looking for that inverted pile driver. Homicide saw it coming, uh, fought his way out of it. And Xavier counters into the single arm DDT. What a match, Xavier known as the all-around best. Homicide probably can also make a claim to that statement is he's exhibited all kinds of offensive styles. These guys hitting each other with just about everything you could think of. Just toying with Homicide there. I wouldn't do that though. He's got that arm, arm bar body slam, just slamming him on that injured arm and Xavier looks like he is now focusing on that limb. Maybe he's realized that on this occasion he's not going to be able to beat down Homicide with pure brutality, with pure brawling. But what he may be able to do is injure that arm enough to try and get himself a submission. Hammerlock applied. And it, you see Xavier mixing in some, some knee uh, blows and also that front face lock. That's straight out of uh, the UFC right there. It's actually out of a Homicide's playbook if you think about it. Up and over, 
Homicide backdropping Xavier, who then, he just draped that arm over the top turnbuckle. Oh, wow. Yeah. Xavier with all of his weight coming down on that shoulder and upper arm. Fujiwara. He's got that sucker locked. He's yanking for all he's worth. Again, Xavier sparing no effort when, when he feels that victory is at hand, but Homicide able to maneuver his way to the ropes. Xavier wants to win this match. Make no mistake about it. He wants to win it more than just about any other match that he's had, certainly any other match that he's had here in 3PW. This is redemption for him. This is revenge. He wants to prove that he can beat Homicide. He wants to prove that he is the all-around best. And look at that innovative submission. He's got both arms locked. He's got the, the head locks. Sort of a version of the cross face. No, I mean, you get, you get these, these innovative moves. I mean, 3PW just brings out the best in people. Absolutely. Five-star performances from the best in the business. That's what you'll get when you check out Propane Pro Wrestling. And... If this is your first time seeing a 3PW event, go to smartmarkvideo.com for Pete's sake. Get some more 3PW events. There's been some history-making stuff going on in this promotion. And you owe it to yourself to pick up some videos and see what all the fuss is about as Homicide is in big-time trouble. Oh! Desperation by Homicide as he sends Xavier's head into that middle turnbuckle. May only be a temporary solution, but it buys him a few seconds and a few feet. And unfortunately for Homicide, Xavier saw him coming. Here we go. Looks like he's going for a tornado single arm DDT. That would be a smart move. Homicide maintains his footing, reverse atomic drop. And a regular atomic drop. Xavier sent into the turnbuckle. Wow. Full speed ahead. Homicide fighting for all he's worth with that good arm. And no three count. Xavier's still in this thing. Homicide looking for a vertical suplex. Xavier blocking it. These guys both so technically sound. Oh, wow. More hard knife edge chops. He's gonna go oh. for it and cradle neck breaker. R.I.P. Uh, Xavier. No. Oh my. He's bringing out all the big guns here tonight. There's only one left that I know of. Biting the fingers. I don't think that's the big gun you were referring to, but it, it hurts. I guess that's everything but the kitchen sink. T-Bone. As always with Homicide, and Xavier as well, tremendous execution on that overhead T-Bone. Homicide slow to get to his feet. He may have uh, knocked himself for a loop with that one as well. And these guys absolutely spent. They've hit each other with all their might and all of their knowledge and all of their ability. And now Homicide with a pile driver. That's old school. And that could seal the deal. No! Wow. Just incredible tenacity by Xavier here tonight. These fans in awe. They're vocal, but at the same time, very respectful of the abilities of both of these guys. Here's the big gun I was talking about. Cop killer. Xavier fighting his way out of it. And look at that. Reverse on prettier like maneuver and Homicide gets his leg on the roof. What a counter by Xavier. Certainly the counter of the night. Reversing the attempt of the cop killer and dropping Homicide's head down into the mat. Here goes Xavier up to the top. What could he be looking for? And, ooh. We'll never know what Xavier was looking for because Homicide meets him up there. Uh-oh. Uh, 
Homicide may be looking for a big superplex. And at this point in the match, a big impact move should spell the end. I don't think either of these guys could survive much more than this. Xavier shoves Homicide off. He's up on top. Oh! 450 off the mark. Homicide on his feet. He's up. Rolling through. Sunset flip. Xavier rolling through now. He's got the legs. He's kicked off by Homicide. Homicide pulling off the... The elbow pad. What, what, what does that mean? Homicide obviously fired up and maybe signaling for something. Here we go, roaring elbow. Oh, nobody there. Xavier with the quick roll up out of nowhere. And he got it. In 15 minutes, 30 seconds, you're missionary power. Also, there will be no Singapore games involved in a football matter and chairs match. And if you don't relieve yourself of the Singapore game, you will be disqualified. Right, Jack? Right. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, Raven five, using his four, power for his own selfish deeds. This is ridiculous. Smoking building? No. Since when is Viking Hall and know anything building? Talk about abuse of power. And what is Raven doing now? He's got Jasmine. Even flow DDT. That was unnecessary. It looks like Sabu is going to do mouth to mouth. Some CPR. <laughs> the Sandman doing his best to play a doctor on TV. I guess there's only one option left. And I think the sugar daddy taking offense to, to the hands on his woman. And now Raven with mouth to mouth. What other perks come with being a commissioner? He's already changing the rules. He's already put himself in the main event. You know, I was all I was all for Raven being commissioner until now. And now Sabu, what the? What's going? Jasmine is being used and abused. She's not used to being used and abused by anybody but the sugar daddy. I think it's better for her to get back to the locker room. This is going to get out of control, I can guarantee you that. Hey, let your woman make out with me or get her out of the ring. Todd Gordon, Alexa.
attempting to escort his uh, sugar daughter, I guess you could say, out of harm's way. So it's truly going to be man on man on man. One fall to a finish. And you know what? Only three PW can bring you these three hardcore icons in the same ring for the very first time. You're right about that, Mike. I don't, I, I don't recall ever seeing these guys all in one match together, but you're seeing it right here on 3PW video or DVD. We thank you for supporting our promotion and for supporting the great folks at smartmarkvideo.com where you can get the entire selection of 3PW videos. Look at Raven mocking both Sabu and the same. And these fans respect the history. Guys doesn't beat the other because any of these guys. Face buster, Arabian face buster onto the Sandman. Great move by Sabu, signature move. And Raven from behind. He can't let a pinfall go down unless he's a part of it. Same can go for any of them. Raven setting up three chairs on the middle of the ring. Oh no. The long-standing feud between Raven and Sandman apparently will continue. Raven wants Sandman as his first challenger at our next event. And what... Whoa! Sandman firing back! I can't believe that. These, guys, is, these guys are both out of it. This is far from over, though. Mike, what 3PW champion Raven wants, 3PW commissioner Raven will be able to provide for himself. to go, Mike. Stare down by Joey Matthews and Danny Doring right here. And the crowd starting a welcome back chant. And it's been quite some time since they've seen these two as a team in this area. Rare display of emotion by Amish Roadkill right there. Well, I kind of think of Dorian and Roadkill as the Jay and Silent Bob of pro wrestling. Amish Roadkill doesn't say much, but when he does say it, it means a whole heck of a lot. Jay and Silent Bob, Goofus and Gallant, no, Beavis and Bunnett, these guys are great. These guys are two opposites. These guys love teaming with each other. Second, Danny, why don't you say what you really feel?
side of the arena out, but the intent is clear. York and Matthews very hesitant now about getting in the ring. They're scared of not only getting a beating from throwing in roadkill, but these hundreds of fans in attendance. You know, Doran put it great. They should not be focused on the fans. They definitely have the advantage. Doring and Roadkill have not wrestled for a year. They have not been a team for a year. That is true. York and Matthews, on the other hand, continuously teaming. That's their specialty. And although they have competed on singles, on singles basis, occasionally their bread and butter has been this past year as a team. These guys are tag team specialists. They know all the moves. They know all the all the back ways. They know everything to do as a team. Danny Doran, another guy. Oh, as he goes for the cheap moon. I've seen a moonsault off the second rope, but you rarely see just a moon off the second rope. You know, Danny Doran showing us here that he can have fun too. You know, we were talking about Blue Meanie before having a lot of fun with these fans. Doring and Roadkill are quintessential entertainers in that ring. And now they're checking to make sure that everything is intact. I think everything seems to be there. It's good to have a partner to double check that kind of thing, you know? These guys are partners. These guys are definitely close inside and outside the ring. successful than York and Matthews at getting the fans riled up and on his side. And here we go. Nice shoulder block. As I was saying earlier, throwing another guy who's just in so much better physical condition than even the great physical condition he was just a few years ago. He has just gotten himself in tremendous shape and he is more dangerous than ever. Doring, and even Roadkill, look at him, look at him, he's in better shape, cut down a few pounds. We're gonna definitely see this guy fly tonight. I think those might even be new suspenders, Mike. Look at that, nice shoulder block again by Doran. Doran firmly has a crowd behind him. York and Matthews going out for a little, little conference call out there. Danny Doring, usually a cool, collected customer, but he seems a little fired up right now. Maybe it's coming back home with his tag partner that he may not have teamed with in a while, but really they've been tag partners. They're tag partners for life. Yeah, but exactly. It's what they say, absence makes the heart grow fonder. You know, Maybe absence will make the team better. And look at that. Danny Doring being leveled with those chops, and he's got some of his own. Doring giving him the receipt. And a straight up choke hold. Or was that a choke hold? It was some kind of hold. I don't know what you would call that. It doesn't matter, the fans love it. You call it. And a clothesline into the corner. And he's going to go for it again. Oh, this is repeated. What would you call that? I would call that a 10 count nipple clamp. More purple nurples. You know what, that definitely does not have a physical thing to add to this match. But you know what, the fans love it. And it's a great psycho liar goal advantage by Danny Doring right there. I've seen more nipple grabbing so far in this match than watching two hours of the Spice Channel. Yeah, did you see the color of those tights Danny Doring has on? Just think about York and Matthews' nipples right now. I'm going to try not to think too much about York and Matthews' nipples. But Danny Doring standing tall in the middle of the ring. Look at that, duck under. Double, double, 
little super kick. Caught you on that one. Dory's gonna fly. Here we go. Up and over. Beautiful teamwork by Doring and Roadkill right there. Are we gonna see Roadkill fly? Are we gonna see this happen? Look at that, the old Three Stooges eye poke, but it works for Roadkill. And just plants them down. Roadkill sig signaling to the ropes. Is this the buggy bomb? Beautiful elbow, beautiful elbow right there. And a side slam! Look at this! We've seen this before! What an innovative counter there! She didn't see Danny Doring also got screwed up on that move by Christian York. And look at Matthews sending Roadkill to the outside and into that gate. You know, the tide has definitely turned for these tag team specialists right here. You know, maybe that ring rust that, that Roadkill and Doring have, maybe that's really showing right now. A team like York and Matthews can definitely capitalize on such things. Doring getting pummeled by both guys in the corner now as Roadkill struggles to make his way back to the apron all the way on the opposite side of the ring. You know what, Roadkill took a really nasty spill onto that outside barrier right there. I don't know if he, if Doring even makes the tag, if Roadkill will be ready for this. Well, ready or not, he seems to want in, but Doring is a long way from his corner. back his turn tending to roadkill you know that smart teamwork right there york distracts roadkill and the ref while matthews goes to work on doring on the outside and christian york with a picture perfect back suplex one only a two count Backing him in the corner. With straight right hands and Doring is now getting a second win. He wants some more. And he's getting it. I'm telling him if he's gonna hit him, he better hit him hard or he better he better get out of his way. Doring now struggling to make his way back to his feet. And a straight eye poke. And again, the same maneuver behind the referee's back. Did Simple yet effective. Danny Doring better make the tag or else these two guys, York and Matthews, will definitely capitalize on it. And you know what? I can see this going in York and Matthews' favor right now. I think they have the advantage, and as a team, I can see them keeping the advantage. Well, if there is any team that knows how to keep an advantage, it's an experienced, well-oiled machine like York and Matthews. And again, Gordon Road kill in, and his temper is getting the better of him because he's doing his partner absolutely no good by distracting the ref, and there's a double suplex. Beautiful double suplex, beautiful double team right there. And a pin attempt, only a two count. John Finnegan doing the best he can, but he can only do so much. He's one referee, one pair of eyes, and there are four competitors doing everything they can to throw this match their way. You know, we just saw, we just saw another beautiful chop by Joey Matthews, but we saw him taunting, mocking the roadkill over there. Roadkill must be fuming at this. He needs to get in. He needs to teach these guys a lesson. Will he get the chance? Danny Doring gets a chance to come back here, a backslide attempt, but no good, and into a neck breaker. And a two and nine pence count. That was so close. Those impact moves off the reversals are really great. You can really win a match with something like that. Now Christian York going at it 
with the referee trying to demonstrate some chops. John Finnegan, he's Philly through and through. He's got that Philly spirit within him, and he won't stand for this. And Jackie Fargo struts a boot. And a bareback. Bareback, right, right there, bareback. Just the opportunity that Danny Doring needed, but can he capitalize? Can he get to that corner? Can he make the tag? He does. Bro kills it. He's a house of fire. The big man clotheslines for all. That's two each. Off the ropes. There goes Matthews. And look at that. Beautiful side slam. Fireman's carry. Where is he going into a cutter? Beautiful TKO right there. Another great move by, by Roadkill. He, he feels that Yorker Matthews have this coming to him. And look at this classic during Roadkill teamwork. Reversal, reversal on the referee. The referee gets that one. Oh. Now all hell can break loose. Poor John Finnegan. Heart attack. Well, during Roadkill version of the heart attack, we've seen that so many times, bring them so many victories. But the referee is out cold, and it looks like we're setting up for a panty drop. Danny Doring about to fly. What's this out there? Joey Matthews has a chair while, while Roe kills up on the ropes. He better watch out. All the way to the top, Roe kill going for the splash, and he gets shot. Oh, God. Right through the table for Roe kill. Doring has his back to York. York has a chair. Doring with a reverse DDT. He got slammed right on that chair. By Joey Matthews, the referee coming to one, two, and three. That's another great show of teamwork by York and Matthews out there. That one year of absence for Doring and Roadkill has definitely shown. I wonder if Broke Hill's okay out there. He took a pretty nasty spill. These fans disappointed, the long-awaited reunion of Roadkill and Doring in Philadelphia here at Viking Hall, unsuccessful.